Hey you, what is up, how's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com, also known as Papa Python. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why pressure is privilege. This is a very important epiphany that we had, um, I had and my friend had, uh, what's dev? We are in Miami, Florida right now actually. And uh, this happened at 10X GrowthCon conference with Grant Cardone. And it was beautiful what Jesse Itzler actually said, and he says that, Pressure is actually privilege. So what the hell does this mean? Have you ever wanted to achieve the things that you only can dream of? Have you ever wanted to be like, hey, I want to be able to code for X amount of hours and be consistent with it, but I keep falling out of it. Have you ever been in a position where you go, okay, I wanna get a job, but I'm gonna like dilly dally and drag on a little bit. But basically the idea is that you know the potential that you have, you know what you could be doing, what you should be doing, what you will be doing, you know what your potential could be, but you don't actually tap into it and we fall really short of it, right? So if your potential is up here, you're falling a lot short, shorter of it. So why does that happen? Oftentimes that happens because you don't allow enough pressure to actually be applied on you, right? Pressure is privilege. So what does that actually look like? Most of our lives, we try to do everything that's comfortable. So we stay in the same location, we stay around the same people, we are around the people who make us feel comfortable with what we do and who we are. Recently in my life, you know, what has been happening is I was around people who weren't doing a lot of things. So they were just like relaxing, spending a lot of time just hanging out, which is cool and awesome, and I'm all for that. But they weren't living every moment at 100%. So for example, that means that if they were having fun with their friends and family, just hanging out, they're on their phones, they're on Instagram. Why not make that time 100%? When they're with their loved ones, they're not at 100%. When they are at their work, at their job, or trying to work on their dreams, they're not at 100%. When they're hitting the gym, they're not at 100%. So it's like, all these moments of their lives are not at 100%, and why is that happening? Well, that's happening because they aren't having enough pressure that is applied to them. For example, when I was around them, I didn't have any pressure applied on me. So what was I doing? I was dilly-dallying, having a good time, spending lots of time on social media consuming content and material, but not actually outputting, not producing, not putting stuff out there that's actually helpful for you, for anybody else, right? For the programming world, for Clever Programmer. I got more and more complacent, I got more and more comfortable. I had friends who also were okay with just not going to the gym, so what happened? I kind of stopped going to the gym. I'm like, you know what, this is all good. Everything is good, life is good. And then there came a point, especially starting in 2019, I was like, okay, I need to fucking change this because if I keep living like this, I'm just gonna be a fucking loser, all right? And I don't wanna be a loser. I don't know about you, but I sure don't wanna be a loser. And my definition of a loser is somebody who doesn't try and commit 100% and stay persistent with what they actually want to be able to do in their life, right? Staying congruent with who you are. I, in 2019, and as 2018 was coming closer, I wanted to hang out with people and spend a lot of time with people who apply pressure to me. So for example, I have my friend Brandon, who will apply pressure to me in business because he's a monster when it comes to business. He's killing it, he's crazy, he's doing millions of dollars in product launches and whatnot, and when I'm around him, he's just like, you're not making content, you're not doing this, you're not running ads, you're not showing up for the people, like what the hell are you doing? And he'll just he'll look at me that way, so I feel so much pressure that I keep thinking about it, and it's almost like there's biological pressure, and so that makes me go back into and hit it harder. It's like I have to elevate my normals, right? I gotta elevate my normals and go to that next level where before my normal was one video a month, man, you know, that's pretty good. But now I'm like, fuck that, let's do one video a day. How about that, all right? Then um, I have this friend, she's amazing. Her name is Amberly, and she's inspi she inspires me so much because she's a badass at what she does. She's like running these freaking marathons. She's killing it, she's passionate, she's energetic, she has ambition and goals. And then I go, okay, another person around me who's so driven with their mission, right? Brandon is driven with their mission. My friend, uh, you know, Tenzin, you guys might know what's there, who's actually recording this video. He's so driven in his mission. So Brandon Tenzin, it's like, focus on making content, focus on pushing myself harder, focus on creating more products for students at Clever Programmer that they will find valuable. Do coding challenges, do coding courses, like fucking go all in and stop just half-assing it and like, Oh, I'm gonna do like a little bit of content, you know, this week, and then I'm gonna like do a little bit of coding, but you know, let's not do like so much, let's not overdo it, there'll be too much. 
at this point, to be honest, like I'm not even doing this for you. I'm doing this for myself so I can show the fuck up all the time, right? A lot of a lot of the beautiful thing about your goals is who you end up becoming by doing them, not what you get out of it. So I'm gonna repeat that one more time. The biggest, most important thing about your goals and achieving them is not what you get, but who you become. So my important thing is like I'm gonna show up and be a person who people wanna follow be that leader, but I have to lead myself first, all right? And then I hope, and it's my privilege, and I thank you for being here and actually following along, and my dream is that you get a lot of value out of this. But if one person gets value out of this, my job is done. So going back, right, I have these people who are putting pressure on me, you know, uh, like I was telling you about my friend Amberly, she's like going to the gym every day, so in my brain, there's pressure on me, and I'm like, you know what, I should be going to the gym every day, or I should be going like five to six times a week. When I see another one of my friends who's really killing it in some other aspect of life where this friend is really full of life, when he's hanging out with family and friends, he's like all in and he just loves them, makes me go, you know what? Maybe I should be doing that. Maybe when I spend time with my family and friends, instead of just being on my phone or just being around them, talking, like actually show passion, like show physiological passion be there 100% mentally, emotionally, put my phone on do not disturb or airplane mode, be there for them. Same thing applies with leading my team. Same thing applies for if I'm sitting down to code and write and make applications, I want to just be able to focus and go all in. But to be honest, a lot of what changed for me and everything turned around, um, especially in 2019, not like I wasn't doing shit, I was doing a lot, even in 2018 and stuff, but you know, I'm like a normal human. I have my highs and lows, and I had a pretty low, 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 you know, shy to get low type of low in 2018. And so now I have to bring it back and come around, but I am so on fire, and I know I'm gonna keep being on fire, but I'm just looking for pressure and just forcing myself into those situations, okay? Other examples are if I have to get on calls with people, I schedule them in my calendar and I force myself to be able to show up for those calls, to code for an hour with a buddy or to talk with a buddy for an hour for a specific agenda or even to just have a normal conversation, whatever it may be, I'm finding ways to have external facing accountability and apply pressure to myself. Even this is video 15, I believe, of day 15 of that challenge that I'm doing where I'm doing one video every single day by always saying this is day 15 of the challenge, this is day 16 of the challenge, there's more pressure being applied to myself because now you are holding me accountable. You, the person who's watching this video, and I'm putting this out there and I'm saying this, so now when I go home and I'm feeling like I just wanna scratch my ass and go to sleep and not do anything, before I'll actually knock out, I'll go, you know what? I need to actually create something. Like, fuck it, like, let's go. After, after I get it done, I always feel amazing. But at that time, maybe I'm thinking, man, I don't wanna do this right now. Like, really don't, I'd rather just go to sleep. But I'll do it because now there's actually pressure being applied and this is a good kind of pressure, all right? This is a healthy kind of pressure. This is a pressure that gets you to do what you are in line with your life to do, okay? This is not the kind of pressure that'll burn you out. And personally, I'd much rather be burnt out than dilly-dallied out, you know? Than lukewarmed out, if that's a term giving 10% for 10 fucking years. Uh, I'd rather give 100% for half a year or one year and then just completely change it, okay? So for example, if I give this channel a clever program one year and I just go all in and give it my all, then if I wanna change directions and do something else, I'll be so happy, I'll, I'll do it. But I can't give it my 10% of what my potential actually is and then go, oh, you know what, now I'm gonna change like my business plan and like now let's do something else because you know, I feel like everybody else has made all these videos and anybody who could get help has already gotten help. Fuck that, it's not even about that. It's about what have I put into it? What kind of effort have I made into it, right? That's why I admire Simple Programmer so much, John Sanmez, because this guy has produced fucking like 2,000 videos almost. And if you ask him, I promise you, while his audience was uh, one of his goals to grow and all that, it's who he's becoming by being able to do that. Right now he's on some crazy shit, he's like talking to Dan Locke and whatever, but that's why this dude has inspired me so much to actually even start my channel in the first place was because he doesn't make excuses, he just focuses on the process, he just keeps doing it and he keeps becoming a different person, right? He's changing with his goals. So this year, all my goals are process-oriented focus. They're not 
outcome. So for example, process oriented, meaning instead of saying, oh, we're gonna, I wanna hit 1 million subscribers this year, that's not my goal. I don't care if I hit 10,000 subscribers in this year, or I hit a million subscribers this year, I mean, it'd be cool, but my main goal is I wanna produce minimum 200 videos. Minimum 200 videos. I want to produce, I wanna to go to the gym minimum 200 times. That's it. Doesn't matter how hard I go, how low I go, it doesn't matter if my squat's at like 400 pounds or 500 pounds, none of that shit matters. What matters to me is that I show the fuck up and actually get to the gym and just go 200 times. I'm not worried about the outcome, I'm just worried about getting myself to follow that process in a disciplined and structured manner. So for you, my friend, I hope what you get out of watching this video is like, look, I'm on day 15 of video 15 challenge. This is the same guy who makes one video every freaking like few months in a blue moon, okay? It's hard to be able to do this, to come up with full energy, just give you all I have every single fucking video. It's hard, it's not easy, but I love doing it. I know it's the right thing. It makes me feel good after I do it, so I'm committing to it, and I apply all kinds of external pressure forces me into it. So for you, if you want to be able to code every day, you want to work on a project every day, you want to try to apply to a job every day, whatever it is, make a goal, talk about it to your friends, hold yourself accountable, but then apply pressure on yourself from external facing accountability. Get your friends to apply pressure to you, and if they're not going to apply pressure to you, get yourself some fucking friends who have the balls to apply pressure on you, okay? Don't be with people who don't apply pressure on you. They're here to make you feel good, but they don't, they're not actually there to help you in your life, okay? So this is something really important. Be around people who apply that pressure on you, please, because that pressure is gonna change your life. Honestly, how, the best way I can put it is I'm the most on fire I've ever been. I'm not missing gym, I'm not missing videos. I am actually, you know, I say day 15, video 15, but in the last 15 days, I've probably made 30 videos, okay? And done a lot more stuff than that. But it's, but what I wanna, the main thing I wanna tell you is that the pressure that's being applied to me, what it makes me feel like is that I don't even feel like I'm actually working, mustering up the courage to do stuff. It's literally like a biological pressure applied to me that makes me go to the gym, make a video. So what I'm telling you is that once you apply it in the right way, it doesn't even feel like you're actually doing so much of that external conflict, fighting your inner demons. You just do it. It just happens. All right. It's the same way as like you probably need to go to the bathroom every day, or you probably need to drink water every day, or eat every day. No matter what, you will do those things. There's this biological need to do that. That's kind of how I feel right now. With so much pressure applied to me from so many different directions, I just feel the need to be at my hundred percent, be at my potential, and it's kind of addicting and it's kind of exciting. So. My message today for you is that get people around you who apply that pressure on you. Be in a position, you know, have yourself goals, make yourself accountable. Be in a position where you are trying to live up to your 100%, okay? And because I'm doing this challenge as well, follow along on this journey with me. This is day 15 out of 30 days of videos that I'm doing in a row. And instead, and you know, follow me at Clever Kazi on my Instagram because you can follow the behind the scenes exactly how I'm doing these things step by step. And plus, you can actually tag me in your stories. You can add Clever Kazi and do hashtag 30 days coding challenge, 30 days challenge, and I'll repost that on my story as well. But this way, you will feel that you are also accountable for something, right? So that's another way for you to apply external facing accountability. But you can do a coding challenge with me for the next 15 days or next 30 days, whatever it is, but commit to something, okay? With that said, thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your face. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video, really helps at <coughs> really helps out the channel. As always, I love your face, and I'll see you in the next video. I have an incredible video that I want you to go and see that I've put together. Okay, this video is unbelievable. This video will show you how I went from being a dumb, broke Oakland Community College student to making $104,000 a year as a developer. I put what would it mean for you if you made your first $1,000 from coding? What would it mean for you if I revealed to you my step-by-step -step system that I use to go from being completely broke to then learning how to code in just a few months, 
landing my contract as a freelancer with Python and being able to make $20,000 while I was a terrible Oakton Community College student. And to then being able to live the lifestyle I want on my own terms and have the ability to have my own time, freedom, money, and have the ability to make an impact on the world and at the same time travel with my friends be there for my family you know when we hit 300,000 subscribers go to all these events even now I'm in Miami at 10x growth con with Grant Cardone how does that lifestyle come about as a Python developer I was able to create that lifestyle for myself and in this video I want to show you that how you can do that for yourself take students like for example John Navarro who went from working with me from complete zero to becoming a senior data scientist or Nazar Mali, who landed a $130,000 contract and now he has moved to Germany with his family and living an amazing life. Or a Farin Sheikh, who was able to make $20,000 after she took one of our programs. But before we continue, I do want to talk about the opportunity that exists in 2019 and moving forward as a Python developer. So please go watch this video. It's an epic video I've put together. Click on the link below in the description and it's going to take you to it. With that said, thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your face and I'll see you in that other video. So go click there. I'll see you right there. Click there. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ah! Thank <laughs> you.